All right, so today we're going to be working on a YouTube viewer's uh, laptop. Okay, so they wanted to upgrade um, to like uh, SSD and as much RAM as possible. Um, I opened it up and it looks like they actually have the highest amount of RAM possible. Unless there's like, I don't know, maybe there's somewhere that they have even more, but I couldn't find it. So anyways, what we're going to upgrade to is this one terabyte Samsung 870 QVO SSD. Okay, um, this model is actually very easy to work on in terms of the RAM and the SSD, um, and as well as the battery and the CD drive if you want to remove it. But if you wanted to get inside, it's quite a bit more work. You do have to remove the keyboard and everything. I'm going to clean the dust off for them as well because it is pretty dusty in here. Um, but yeah. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and show the upgrade process. Um, of course, you want to make sure your computer's off. Um, you can remove the battery. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but the model on this is a Dell Inspiron 17R 5737. They actually show on here with the dash, but most of the time I have to use the service tag to look it up. Um, you just go to Dell's website. They have the support. You can view all support and enter your service tag, and then you can find what model your computer is. Anyway, so the battery, you pull these two tabs to the side. Once you've done that, it stays clicked out until you take the battery out and then put it back in. So you take that out, and then there's this little um, protruding part here. So you would use your fingernails or something to get that out. You could probably even just flip the computer over, but I use my fingernails, and here we go. We got the battery out. Battery model number is MR90Y. I don't know if you can read that, but there you go. All right, to put this back in, put the battery this side down, and then you go ahead and drop that into place. It clicks in. All right, so you don't need to remove the battery to um, take out the RAM or the hard drive, but if you want to be safe, if you're worried you might drop something in there, you can take the battery out, open it up, and then press the whole press open the laptop and then press and hold the power button for 10 to 15 seconds, right right here. But again, um, I'm not too worried about it. Um, the other model number is just Dell Inspiron 17R. All right. So to remove this bottom cover, pretty simple. There's two screws here holding it down. You use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. All right. So we'll take that screw. You'll undo it. It has a little rivet that holds it into place, so you're not supposed to actually completely remove the screws. And this is actually um, by design because now that you've removed the screw, it creates a gap here, and that allows you to get your fingernail or pry tool underneath here, and then you can kind of pull this up. You can go from the other side as well, and just kind of rip that thing up just like that. And there we go. We got this cover off. All right, you got two sticks of RAM here. Again, they already have the max. They have um, a, two 16 gig sticks. And the RAM is PC3L12800S. I don't think you can find 32 gig sticks of PC3 RAM, but yeah. So actually, sorry, they have two 8 gig sticks, which is 16 gigs. I don't think you can even find 16 gig sticks of RAM of uh, DDR3 for laptops. But yeah, PC3L12800S. That's what you want to look for. Um, and then you can get any size. So I think eight gigs per stick is the max. So 16 gigs total. All right. Um, you do have the BIOS or CMOS battery here, though. If you did want to remove it, it would be very difficult because this plastic is here. I don't know why they didn't just cut the plastic a little more. To be honest, if you really wanted to get to the CMOS battery and you didn't care, you could probably just break the plastic here. But um, yeah, otherwise you have to completely disassemble this thing and it's a lot of work. All right, so we're going to get the one screw out here. All right, I don't want to do a complete disassembly just in case because you can end up damaging things. Um, I like to keep the screws in order by putting them the flat side down on my desk like that. In the pattern, I remove them just like every other computer. Um, so we're going to just move that to the side to remove the CD drive. Once you take you've taken that screw out I like to get my fingernail and then along the little um, whatever you would call this the bezel I would slide it up and down as I pull it just like that and as you can see the CD drive comes out really easily so um, this looks like one of the possibly thinner models so if you wanted to replace this you can actually replace this with a second hard drive adapter instead of if you don't use the cd drive a lot of people don't use cds anymore so they replace this with a hard drive caddy um, you can actually take this bezel out and attach that to the replacement um, hard drive caddy and you can use that as a second hard drive slot 
All right, so we're gonna put this back in. There are screws hidden under here, so if you are gonna take the whole computer apart, just keep that in mind. All right, so we're gonna put that back in and we're gonna put the screw back in place. All right, so now the moment we've been waiting for, we're going to put the SSD into this slot. So the customer wanted to basically upgrade their computer so that it works um, as fast as possible. These old hard drives are really slow. I don't like using them in anything unless you're just doing a lot of read and write cycles. Um, so if you're constantly adding data, deleting it, adding data, deleting it, then you'll probably um, benefit from a spinning drive. But for the most part, SSD is the way to go. It's much faster. And if any, uh, if anything, if you do a lot of read and writes, you could always just uh, migrate your data over to an SSD after you've used it a while. All right, so anyways, we removed those three screws here. There's no screw here because that was holding the cover in with those two screws. Just grab this little plastic tab. If you can't grab this, um, you can also use a small screwdriver. So sometimes these tabs aren't really good for pulling that out. So what I end up doing is I get like a T8 uh, screwdriver bit. So let me grab one. Let's see. Where's my... Okay. Um, you can use slightly larger too, but you have these little screw, the screw holes here. You can use like whatever fits in there. It doesn't have to be a screwdriver, but I like to use that from the hard drive. As you can see, it sits like that, and then you can use that to pull the hard drive back. And that's one really uh, easy way to pull the hard drive out. Then you can go ahead and use the tab to lift it up if you can't lift it up anywhere else. And there we go. So there's a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. There's four screws holding this in bracket on it. Um, we're just going to take those out and then we're going to transfer it over to the SSD. Okay, um, if you are planning to upgrade to an SSD and all the data you want to keep, if you want to keep that all intact, um, you'll want to actually clone your hard drive to the SSD before you take it out. Um, I actually have a video showing that, so if that's what you want to do, just let me know. I can actually send you that video. Um, or you can go to my uh, playlist uh and it's under general computer repairs. So I highly recommend um, everyone watch those general computer repair videos because that'll help you learn a lot about um, working on computers and everything, like a lot of things in general. So, okay, so we're gonna pop the SSD out here. You wanna have the connectors line up the same way and we're just gonna transfer this over and then put the screws into place, all right? Just like this, line everything up. It helps to kind of just line up one screw first and then get that screw in loosely. All right, that way you can kind of just maneuver all of this in the right way. Um, I actually, actually did it upside down because they have these little uh, protruding, what, I don't know, whatever, protruding parts. So you do have to get the bottom half in first, okay? And then you can go ahead and get that screw lined up. And get that screw in all right again I just loosely fit it first that way I can make sure I get all the screws in and then once I make sure everything is lined up then I will tighten the screws down completely okay Samsung's been making these uh, QVO model SSDs very price competitive uh, especially in the upper range with the one terabytes so yep if you were planning to get an SSD, I highly recommend the Samsung SSDs. Um, Price-wise, if they're too expensive, um, I've found Crucial, Kingston, and SanDisk to be really good as well. Um, Western Digital uh, basically bought SanDisk, so their quality is probably very similar, though I haven't really used uh, Western Digital SSDs much. Right, we're gonna drop the SSD back into here. Again, you wanna have it slid back slightly a little bit to the to this side and then we're gonna have to get that in and then slide that back over just like that it's reconnected go ahead and put all the screws into the bracket to hold it into place and that's basically it upgrading this thing so again if you wanted to migrate everything over you can clone the drive otherwise um, you probably want to create a Windows uh, USB installer Microsoft actually makes those available on their website and I actually have a YouTube video showing how you can get that to create a US, bootable USB and also how to upgrade your computer from uh, an older OS into the newer Windows 10. I don't know what's going to happen when they come out with Windows 11 because they've been talking about Windows 11 a lot recently. So I don't know what's going to change there. 
but uh, we'll find out. I haven't really been interested in looking into Windows 11. Once I start getting customers with Windows 11 computers, I'll probably start looking into it, but yeah. All right, let's go ahead and pop this down. Just clip everything back into place. Okay, and then put in the, what the, where did my, oh, I put it away. It's like, where'd my screwdriver go? Okay, so go ahead and tighten back in the screws. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and the other thing, if you're wondering how to boot off the USB drive that you create, so let me show you that real quick. So let's go ahead and get the Windows 10 USB installer. So I have this little USB that I put Windows 10 on. I'll flip that around. All right, let's go ahead and plug the USB in. If it has USB 3 ports, you'd want to use those because it's faster. So it's labeled with the SS thing there. Those are the super speed um, USB ports. All right, so I'm going to plug it in there. Sometimes Windows might not take the installation through the USB 3 ports. If that's the case, then you'll want to plug it in the USB 2 port. All right, so anyways, we're going to turn this on. And then when it's starting up, you want to press F12. That opens the boot options, the um, temporary boot options. So you don't want to change it in BIOS because otherwise you're going to change the temp, uh, the, um, what do you call it? The permanent or uh, the main BIOS settings. So here you can see UEFI boot. So depending what your USB drive, it'll show different, but it should show this EFI USB thing. That's what you want. Sandisk Cruiser Fit, that's my USB. We'll click that and it should show here. There we go. We got the Windows 10 set up. We'll go in there, 64-bit option. And usually if you have Windows 8 or Windows 10 installed on your computer before, it'll automatically detect the license and you don't have to enter the license key. Once you connect to the internet and then run some updates, it'll automatically activate your Windows. If you have Windows 7 or older versions, I don't know if the older versions you can, but with Windows 7, and probably, I guess, Windows Vista, you can type in the um, Windows product key on there. So uh, when it asks for the product key, you can type in the Windows 7 or Windows Vista product key, and it should allow you to activate that way. But um, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like, subscribe, uh, share my channel so others can work on their devices. If this video helped you save money, consider um, sending some my way. Um, like even a small amount like a dollar helps everything's good and yeah all right so when i do the installs usually i'll go through um it has this like agreement thing i always just push the space bar to accept custom install and then i'll just it'll be unallocated if it's not unallocated then i'll actually go and delete all the partitions but yeah, when you get a brand new drive, it'll show like this. You just press enter. It'll automatically create the partitions it needs, and then it will do the installation. After that, I usually will run Windows Update several times. On certain models, you do have to get special drivers from the um, manufacturer's website or using some Windows Store manu um, uh, computer manufacturer apps. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, I do have a video in my general uh, computer repairs that shows things I optimize in Windows when I run it. And I didn't really show everything 100% because I also install some programs that are um, that I find really useful. But yeah, other than that, hopefully this video helped you guys again, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Let's drop this.